Give me that. And... Welcome everyone, it's episode 245 of Aussie Tech Heads. Yip, yip, hooray. And uh, how do we find ourselves tonight? I'm pretty good. And the other two larrikins are on the Skype as well. Eric and Will, how are you guys? Hi, mate. Hi, Will. Yeah, not too bad. That's good. Cool. Now, Eric is uh, not in his usual studio tonight, we must say. No. You're at a, a nice little... Um, I'm in witness protection. Yeah, looks, Can't tell you where I am. Uh, nice soft lighting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it looks it looks good. So so um what's so if you hear a knock on the door and I disappear, <laughs> you'll know what's happened. Call the cops. <laughs> Call the cops. Duck for cover. Yeah, so, <laughs> so uh what's happening? Uh Will, what have you been up to these this this past week? Anything exciting? Oh, nothing major, just trying to get all the <laughs> technical issues with Computers. You were you, you were all right on Tuesday like, night though, weren't you? <laughs> hey. You were okay on Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday night was fine. I thought I'd go through, check everything, write down all the settings, make sure I know where they all are, what what's all going, what's all happening. Mm. Yeah, no, Skype decided otherwise. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Normally does. Good old Skype. But at least it's been up. It hasn't fallen over like uh, it had the last couple of weeks, you know, when Microsoft took over. Yep. But um, you know, you get that, <laughs> you get that. And uh, Eric, busy at work. You 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 be due for a holiday. Yeah, flat out. Flat out you know, got to clear the decks before you leave, or else you come back and it's a big pile of dog turd when you get home. Well, that's right. So you, you're doing a going at a good time at the end of the financial year, which is today. Um, yep. So, so if anyone's trying to contact me in the last uh, day or two. And for the last minute, oh, it's 30th of June, what I'm going to do? Too bad. <laughs> Phone's off. Oh, you've heard about these accountants going overseas. <laughs> well, you know, you don't leave your tax planning to the last day. No, that's right. That's right. All right. So uh, so this is the show where we'll uh, go through the news. It's, it's peaked our, or tweaked our, our fancy through the week, and there's been plenty of news this week, from MBN to Telstra to Optus to whatever it is, iPads, whatever, whatever it may be. So you can call in live if you like. If you, if you want to listen and watch the show live, live.thesecrethub.com, Thursday nights at 7.30 we start and start recording about 10 minutes after that, if all goes well. And also if you want to email us, it's Glenn, Will or Eric at aussietechheads.com.au. If you want to call in live, just add Aussie Tech Head to, the, to your Skype. And then uh, call in through the show. Just you'll come in if if no one else is on the Skype. You'll come in straight into the show, but you'll be on mute. So just wait for us to to pick you up, and uh, we'll have a bit of a gas bag and yeah, see what you got to say. But get it off your chest. Get it off your chest. Okay, where are we up to tonight? Let, do you want me to start with the story? Uh, no? Yes, you, oh, you can start. <laughs> your, your show. Okay. Well, we'll start with. Well, let's start with an Actually, M, an just eight. before you start too. Yes. Just a reminder about the um. The Facebook pages, the Secret Hub and the Aussie Tech Head. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so I know, look, there's a couple of other little Aussie Tech Head group pages, old group pages. I've got to, <laughs> look, I've got to sit down and delete those when I find out how to. I, guess, I don't guess it's, I don't think it's too hard. But yeah, well, um, there's an Aussie Tech Head fan page. That's the one to get onto. Uh, mm-hmm. It's the one with the logo. Currently, it's the Will and myself is on the logo there. So that's the right one. And what el- what, el- what other fan page, what other page will TBT um, fan page, Secret Hub one as well. Oh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, the Aussie Tech Head's the main one. Um, that's where people interact. There, you get to keep an eye on that. Find out when our shows are coming and going and what's going on. That's right. And if you're on the Twitter, I've got uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Aussie Tech Heads, and also I've set up a news feed on Twitter called Aussie Tech News. So A U S S I E T E C H N E W S. Look at it, it's only set up. It is a bot, but it only it's only set up to do about like five stories every half an hour. So it's not going to smash your smash your Twitter stream like someone I know. And so that should be good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so follow that one. That'd be good. All right. So uh, oh Will, you've got a Twitter. You've got Mr. Tomkinson. Uh, yeah, Mr. Tomkinson. M R T O M K O N S O N. And Eric is Eric uh, e R I K Franco F R I N. Yes, right. Yep, F R I N C O. That's the one. So yeah, stop by and uh, follow us, and we'll we'll be sure to tweet some interesting stuff for you. Because oh, by the way, I went to Movie World today. Saw that Monster Extreme. Yeah, I that. yeah I've, I took some video of it. Like you know, it's probably not going to be as good on video, but I tell you what, like, I've never been to see any of these crusty demons or anything like that. But fair income, I want to now. These guys. 
It's just, it's just amazing. But, yeah. But did you see the old Police Academy stunt show? Yeah, that's not, that's not only on hiatus. I think. Is that the, the Hollywood oh. stunt driver? Or is that another one? No, yeah, the, you know, the old the, Police Academy cop cars. The old oh, Police Academy. Yeah, probably years ago. That's been going for 20 years. Mm. Was Mr. Yeah. Freeze still there? That's getting a bit old too, isn't it? <laughs> Mr. Freeze. <laughs> I didn't see him. It was cold no, though. Well, actually, I think he was there today. I think it was only 16 degrees. <laughs> it was a bit <laughs> cold. Um yeah, so, yeah, the Hollywood stunt show, I think that's coming back. But this thing, look, I'm going to post a couple of things up on YouTube. And look, I've been getting around with my camera and posting a few things up on YouTube slash The Secret Hub. And, like, you know, most, sometimes it's not tech, but I hope you guys don't mind. Like, last week I was at the show, the Mudrabar show, so I, uh, I filmed a, a pig race, of all things. And you can have a look at a pig race <laughs> on the YouTube if you don't know, never seen one. It was quite exciting. I didn't see any $50 bills trading hands, but, you know, behind the scenes, there might have been something going on behind the back shed. Oh, yeah. Who knows? Who oh, knows? Yeah. And then I, on the way out, I filmed a, a uh, sheep being shorn. So, oh, uh, God. I'm, th- I'm glad you said shorn. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there were no New Zealanders there as far as I could see. <laughs> Sorry, Kev. <laughs> Oh, you're not true blue New Zealand, though, are you? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, well, all right. So let's get stuck into some stories. Now, MBN, I've got a good MBN story, which is... Which is, which is, this, is, the the, gonna, is this the one that's going to rile me or not? No. This, no? Is, this is not the one that should <laughs> okay. roll, right. that will roll you. Okay. Stage two begins in Tasmania, so that's good. Construction on the second phase of the National Broadband Network's begun in, in I don't know, southeast Tasmania or somewhere. Uh at Sorrel, east of Hobart. So Mr Green, whoever he is, said that from March next year, services would be available on the superfast fibre optic network to 11,000 homes in Traiar Bunner, Kingston Beach, Deloraine and St Helens, Georgetown and South Hobart. So there you go. So those guys are obviously getting re- really... You know, so if, if it's only just started to... But I wonder how many people will take it up. I think it's it's growing. I think... Uh, they, look, I, I, I was going to read about this, but there was some law, it was a state law... In Tasmania, and oh, since I hope that, so, mate. yeah, and since it was changed, uh, the the uptake's been more. It was something. Look, I apologise for not reading further into it. It was something about uh, it, it was an opt opt out instead of an opt in. So you must have to opt out of the NBN rather than opt into it. So that law's been changed or something apparently. But uh, but anyway, that wasn't the main the main my main NBN story. Look, there's a uh, there's a guy down in Wollongra, South Australia, and. Uh, and he's been writing a blog. He's a, he's a CEO of some PC company or something down over there. I don't know what it was. But he, look, I've got a link to his blog in the in the show notes. Now he's uh, he, he's hooked up to the MBN, and at, at last, at last, we've we've got a bit of an idea of how how this baby actually goes. So I'll just read a little bit from his blog. Uh, I've done a few speed tests and also a bunch of screenshots, which I've included on the on the show notes if you want as well, at aussietechets.com.au if you want to know where they are. As you can see from the tests on speed tests, he was averaging 95 megabits downstream and 35 megabits upstream. Now, that's, that's, that's just – That's what you want. That is just amazing. Uh, on Oz speed test, it was fairly similar, although I am not sure how accurate it is since it's only pulling a small file. The FTP local mirror was amazingly fast at 11 megabytes per second. I also uploaded a bunch of pics to my web server and went at lightning speed. Most users will appreciate the upload speeds. So um, now the most impressive thing, oh, well, if you didn't think that 95 down and 35 up was impressive, incidentally, the- theoretical is 100 down and 40 up. So it's not going too bad. Mm. Like, he's, he's not going too bad at all. Uh, he's... This is this is the most impressive, I think, because this is what you want. The ping. Have a guess what his ping was. This is th- three. Oh, exactly. Bingo. Three. Three milliseconds. Three. So, so it, was, it should be. Oh, Bloody hell. How fast is that? How fast is that? That's, that's lightning. Yes. Now, he did say that uh, look, in, on day two, he's done a day two on his blog, and go and read and have a look at that. Because uh, he's saying, you know, some some sites he goes to overseas and all that, like they they still do come down at ADSL speeds because that's what that's what's getting dished up. But if you can get if you yeah. can get onto a good server, and you know you, you can you that's can, right. You can only go as fast as the pipe allows you. So if he's you know driving down a, uh, an alley, you can only go so fast. So 
Yeah, you know? that's right. You can only push so much water through a straw. So, that's right. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so he's got some amazing speeds coming out of that. And uh, uh, he was saying that every he had no dropouts. You know how I was having those those line sync problems. Mm. Well, apparently that must be pretty generic and pretty common with ADSL because he said uh, he was getting experience in line sync problems at least once a day on ADSL and I think he's had this on for about 48 hours or whatever it was and hadn't had one problem. But I mean, like the speedtest.net, yeah, speedtest.net only goes up to 100 megabits a second. That's at, that's at speedometer limit, you know. So. Someone's going to be rewriting some <laughs> software soon. Yeah, well, that's right. That's right. So we'd all... Sorry, kind of makes me wonder how they tested the um, the Rnet, the AA Rnet um, gigabit internet that they've got running at the moment. Well, well, they mustn't use speed test unless they've got a little secret, little <laughs> secret uh, graphic hidden out the back door in the back shed. But, uh, yeah, they've got a um, a forty gigabit <coughs> connection along thirteen hundred k's of fibre network between it's between the three CSIRO. Radio astronomy facility facilities. Yeah, right. Uh, in parks, Narrabri. What is it? Yeah, Narrabri and Tamworth. Narrabri. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, um, that... And with the implementation of a couple of, well, they gave this thing a, a weird name. New forty slash one hundred gigabit coherent detection transformer transponders. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy for you to say, Will. <laughs> what was that, Eric? Yeah, as long as I get three milliseconds, if it was 40 up and 40 down, I'm happy. Oh, well, how good would that? How, they, how, how easy would they, this, yeah. our streaming be? Well, <laughs> Mate, I would have well, will it, we'd no duplexing from Will's end, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they get um, uh, unmeasurable ping at that low. Yeah, right. Um, they get 40... Uh, what was it? Yeah, uh, where is it? Right. 40 gigabit per second up and 100 gigabit per second down. So they transferred 2,400 2, terabytes was delivered in three days. Mm. That's a lot of, that's a lot <laughs> of yeah, data. You know, that'd be like, that'd be like your, you'd be like your hard drive is sitting right there next to you. Yeah, oh, yeah. that'd be fast. But, but I'd like to know so I think that this particular setup they've got is capable of transferring 3.2 terabits per second without any further upgrade. So it's capable of going a thousand times faster than it currently is. Yeah, that, that's that's massive. <laughs> but I'd like Theory. to know. But just just going back to that first story about the being rolled second stage getting rolled out in Tasmania, have they only like got five blokes doing this? Because like why are they why can't they do simultaneous rollouts? Well, what happened with the stuff in Tasmania was they changed, um, I think it was the end of the month, they changed contracts at the end of the month. Well, no, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you because it's all political. Hmm. I read. The, the, um, uh, it's all political. I read it. They're rolling it out in Tasmania because that's where they, the Green vote. Then yes. they're going to roll out and all, this, all the seats that the Labor government got and got, you know, got backhanders for, mm. they're going to roll it out. That's it. I don't know why they don't don't do it simultaneously across all the states. You know, all the rural in every state start there. Bang. You know. uh, and I also read as well. Uh, okay. I also read as well that through the week that they're rolling it out to, uh, pretty soon and like like very very soon to the first sites in the Northern Territory. And guess why they've got it? Because it's a Labor seat as well. <laughs> mm. So um, you know, I mean, in terms right. of it, yeah, this is what I don't know about this government. It's it's got a Bipartisan, they cannot give people things whether they be <laughs> You sound a bit like a Dalek, Eric. Internet connections or better roads based on what politics they are. It's whoever needs those facilities, regardless of what. Blood oh, sorry, mate. It's I'll, I'll plug in and out. Yeah. So um, the, um hello. Even yeah, in terms right. of yep. just in Tasmania, they had a big hold up because they changed contractors because they couldn't decide if it was better to spend a little bit of money up front, dig some trenches and run the cu run the optic underground or whether off they're better off running it with the existing power lines. And part of the problem is there that 
the existing above ground power lines because of the, the infrastructure in some of the areas are eventually going to be underground. But in the end, they end up settling, running them above ground. And now there's a big uproar saying, well, you've just spent how much money doing that? And in five years' time, you're going to have to put it back underground again. Mm. <laughs> so they can't even get a small area right, you know. But, e- but even so, I still can't understand. Why can't they have, you know, why can't they have five crews or ten crews or more, you know? Why, why do we have to just do one thing at a time? Why is there only allowed one puller at a time? Because they're morons. They're yeah. morons. <laughs> yes. So, because I want it here. I'm impatient. I want 95 down. I want 40 up. Well, I don't, look, I don't even care. It's, to me, it's not even about whether I want it here or not. It's about how. Hang on, Eric. How badly managed as usual are. and how yeah. inefficient they are. If mm. There are a thousand rural communities across the whole country that need this straight away. Yeah, and yeah. So, which brings me to another story. Might have to, Eric. You might have to turn your video off. Um, otherwise, it's gone now. All right. <laughs> this is a, that, his connection dropped out. <laughs> All right. So we'll we'll have a break and we'll uh, try and sort the Dalek out, and uh, we'll, we'll be we'll be back in a sec. All right. So, I'd say he ran out of signal by the sounds of that. Hang on, so I'll just save this while I'm here. Yeah, because there's another story I was reading um, saying that, yeah, they've just spent all this money running it above ground in five years' time. Once they legislate the cables are going to be underground, they're going to have to run it all again. So, well, it's not yeah. Telstra, though. You can't really blame Telstra for it because... Oh, no, I don't bl- no it's got nothing to do with them. They've, well, no, they've, they've just, chat room. Oh, they've just oh, sold, sold all their pits. This, sorry. They've just sold all their pits, so that should be right, shouldn't it? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I've got a couple of interesting Telstra stories here. A female Dalek. <laughs> this will take you just want one of those, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I figured that, Monaro, after I read it. I'm like, hang on a minute. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Bob Catter, what is, what's his stance on the broadband? On the um, thing, me bobber. I think he knows that it exists. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, we get Will. See if we can get Will in the in the frame. Oh, yeah, that worked. <laughs> the other up. I had to go down to bring you up. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, um, I have a heap of NBN stories um, this I, week, but I just sort of really didn't <laughs> find interest in any of them, to be honest. Yeah, and I just found it. Int- I just found it interesting because, um, well, uh, just because there's this guy who who's actually started posting how good it is. Mm. Oh, look! I mean, the NBN itself, I'm interested in. The 15-year wait before it doesn't really interest me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. Hang on. <clears throat> We're going back for for the end. <laughs> All right. We're going back for Eric. <laughs> Here he mm. is coming through. All right. How's that? Hang on. Just waiting for picture. Waiting for a picture. Here we well, go. Was, there we are. Before you dropped off, was you may have to um, turn your video off. So did you? What did you do? Did you reboot or something, Eric? Or just no, re- I just um, restarted the the dongle. Oh, okay. Well, we'll run with that and see how we go. If it here we go. If it plays up, yeah. But you get what? Well, it's a Telstra dongle, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll be right. We'll just call you a Dali. <laughs> In all honesty, I don't think it's the dongle. I think it's my headset. No, no, it's the connection. No, it is, is it? Whatever, okay. wherever it is, because it, it's, um, it's, yeah, it just dro- it drops in and out. Yeah. You, you'll know when you listen to it back, if you do. That's all right. It's good when we don't record. 
Hang on, I'm going to push the button right now, but don't tell it. <laughs> okay. Um, hang on, get me back on. All right. Okay, well, well okay. we've reset the dongle and hopefully we'll go. So um, have, we, have we finished with that story or we got any more to, to say? I think no, it, oh, look, we've, I've got plenty to say, but let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I think when when is it? Well, last question. When is it expected to come to to everyone? Is it fifteen years? Something like that? Will you were saying something? Is it is that true? Fifteen years or something? I think it was ten, wasn't it? So ten years. Something stupid. It's ten. So so. Yeah, it is ridiculous. It shouldn't take ten years. Now it sounds Yeah. Um, all right. We didn't get any of that, but we'll we'll keep we'll push on. <laughs> We'll push on. All right. So, okay. So let's have a go on this guy. He was. He was. I've got another story later on about well, similar to MBN, but we'll, we'll we'll get off that subject for now. You seem to have a lot of stories about guys. Well, <laughs> that's just how it works these days. <laughs> There's no girls in tech. You know that. There's nothing. Nothing going on. Um, now this no. bloke's been employed by this place. In Melbourne, very sketchy, isn't it? Very sketchy details. He resigned. He had resigned and was about to leave the job when he was abruptly sacked. He apparently was sacked because he had 3,000 transactions on a chat line during work time. So his employer claimed after searching their computer he had been using the Google Mail chat service when, when he was supposed to be working. The employer said in a letter of termination that, engaged, that he engaged in personal activities for such a period of time while at work was akin to theft. Of hundreds of thousands, of hundreds if not thousands of dollars. That's how, that's how bloody upset the employer was. Hundreds if not thousands. Uh, while at work, I've paid time. But anyway, the Fair Work Australia Commissioner, Anne Gooley, good old ghouls, <laughs> said that neither party had provided... Ghoulsies. In- Ghoulsies. <laughs> just as well, <laughs> just as well the... Um, or, or is it... Oh, Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say the L's in the wrong place, but no, nah, that, that's all right. Just watch, she, get, she might get a kick in the ghoulies. So neither part of, <laughs> <laughs> neither part of uh, provided independent evidence about the, the net use. She said that while excessive use of social media during work hours may justifiably uh, lead to dismissal, there was insufficient evidence to, to dismiss this guy. He had also not been given an opportunity to respond. So there you go. That was just something I've just picked out. Now, this other little story that I think might... Um, be interesting to Eric. Wait till I yeah. find it. Wait till I find it because it, it, I find these stories frustrating as well. As as, as well now, GPs, GPs. Oh yes. <laughs> you know, I, I think you probably know where I'm going to go with this. GPs. Yeah, go on. GPs get bonus for health video consultations. So, doctors who work as close as twenty k from the the nation's capital city centres will get an incentive payment the first time they help a patient take part in a video conference consultation with a city specialist. Guess how much... Hey? Go on. Guess how much the incentive is to help someone with a video conference? Oh, I know how much, but uh, let's take a stab, Lounge. (laughs) Let's take a stab... And we'll say six thousand dollars. Six thousand bucks. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> now, now apparently the, the story goes on. There are no rules to prevent a doctor during just one telehealth service to claim the six thousand dollars. But the Department of Health and Medicare will monitor the ratio of incentives to services and make adjustments of rort if rorting emerges. Oh, so here's just another scheme that's going to get the the backside is going to get rorted out of it. The Australian Medical Association has warned that the new scheme could be um, could be hampered as many specialists do not use computers. So they're saying that, that they've got to pay these guys six thousand bucks because the specialists don't use computers. So therefore, they've got to encourage the use of computers. If they're a specialist, aren't they using computers? I don't understand. They no, I think what they're saying is that <clears throat> it's a, probably a two-step process here. If you've got a computer and we do a video conferencing thingo, you'll get six grand. But something on the other hand, they're saying this is not going to work because a lot of these specialists don't have computers, which means they won't get the six grand. Why don't they have right. computers? Because some of these, not all of them, there's a lot of old specialists who are you know in their 60s and 70s who, was, who just do things the, the old way. 
Nah, they can get stuffed. There's a lot of young specialists that don't use computers. Why? I know a few of them. They just, they, that's what their secretaries are for. Anything needs doing up, the secretary does it. Other than getting, you know, the closest they come to computers is what is looking at x-rays and, you know. Right. Well, anyway. Well, I don't know any specialists that don't use computers, but um, I don't know what they're doing up there, mate. But <laughs> I don't know any that don't use computers. But AMA President Steve Hambleton welcomed the incentive. Oh, that's what it is. <clears throat> yeah, so welcome to the incentive and said the AMA and the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners were seeking advice on what equipment doctors would need to make best use of this telehealth. The associate had been told it would be possible for doctors to use a Skype connection uh, and, and they'd be eligible for six grand. There you go. Yeah, this is typical. This is typical. Look, I've got a lot of doctor clients, right? So I'm not going to, you know, shit where I eat mm. by slagging <laughs> up on a doctor. Yeah, yeah. But on the same time, um, I would suggest that more than half of these doctors will probably use this properly. Mm. Not my doctors. I don't know what my doctors will do, but let's mm. say in generally, half the doctors will use this properly yeah. and the other half will rot it. Look, I'm not saying that there's that, – that I'm, not, I'm not saying that – look, I'll probably say yes – I probably say yes. There's probably going to be some sort of rorting going on. Or oh, my concern, or my issue with this, this story, is why are we paying six grand? Like, well, that's yeah. right. What's what's the? You know, I, my view would have been: you know, wouldn't it be part of a, a medical practices or a specialist practice part of their you know Customer long or medium term strategy to mm. bring this sort of stuff in? And yes. go, right, you know what, next year we're going to implement this and we're going to start doing it next month and That's right. you know, do all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And you know, I tell you what, I video conference with my clients now using Skype. No yeah. one gave me freaking six grand. Yeah, I oh, know. Isn't it crazy? I think the whole thing… Because I've got, I've, got clients, you know, I've got clients in China, I've got clients in Queensland and they say, look, I want to fly down and see you. And I say, save your money. Get mm. on Skype. We'll tee in a time. Get yourself a nice camera and a decent mic and let's go. And yeah. I do this all the time, and they and they they love it because they don't have to jump on a plane. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, right. Or pay ridiculous STD rates calling me, for example. Yes, right. Yeah. Okay. And I can see their face. Oh. They can see my. They can hold stuff up. You know, whatever. We can share screens. And no one gave me six grand to put that in place. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I you, think you find a lot of it is an incentive because a lot of the the surgeries, and I know the one I go to for a fact, doesn't have equipment to do that. All their systems are all dumb terminals, all based at an off-site server. They don't have the hardware infrastructure in place or the internet in place to do that sort of stuff. Well, so, in my, pra- my doctor practices have all that in place, um, but you know, not, every, not all the practices are the same. A lot of them don't. A lot of, you know, there's heaps of them that don't. Yeah, look, I, I'm just, look, I can just... Look, my my issue is okay if your practice doesn't want to get with the technology, and and as and as as this article said, like for two hundred dollars or whatever it is, you can you buy a, a camera, a webcam for what as cheap oh, as forty bucks. It's nothing. I got the Microsoft HD one eight one eighty p camera for ninety nine dollars. Yeah, and and I mean, like, I don't know, I don't understand. Like, it's something that should be, yeah, as as you said, part of the doctor's, um, say, customer charter or something, of, you know. To, yeah, it's part. Of, it should be part of their service. ongoing evolution the, as as a business. Sorry, Will. But I think what people are going to get upset about is a lot of the doctors that already do it are like, well, hang on, I've been doing this for X amount of years and never got anything out of it. Why do suddenly the new people get something out of it? You know. Mm. It's well, their way of giving the new people an incentive, but as usual, the government thinks if we throw money at the problem, mm. it will fix itself. Yeah. It's well, not about throwing money at the problem. It's like the Aboriginal problem. You throw money at them, you think they fix No, it's about education. Mm. It's not about money. No, well, I think the, the, the whole scheme or the whole – this whole thought process started back with Kevin 07, I think, uh, when it was uh, – when they wanted to get this up and running. This is yeah, part of the – Yeah, giving out our money. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we, this is not our money. This is taxpayers' money. See, we're going to piss it up against the wall. Yay, let's go. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter too much in Queensland anyway because nobody's being paid anyway in the health system. So No, that's right. That's still a shambles, isn't it? That's still – that, it's, uh, it's not much better down here, fellas. Not yeah. much better than here. Yeah, but the, but latest, um, the latest thing is some people are owing owing up to ninety nine thousand dollars in overpayments. Mm. <laughs> overpayments? What do you mean? Over the, 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 the staff? You mean? The the doctors and nurses have oh, to pay back right. up to ninety nine thousand dollars. Yeah, pay back? Why? What do they have to pay back for? Well, they would because have, they're overpaid. 
They would have received too much. Hey, oh, that's right. They had that payroll disaster. Yeah, they had the bungle. I still do. <laughs> they had that little thing where they're spending more on fixing 150 didn't million. They, they spent 20 million bucks on the payroll system that didn't work, and then to, only to go back to the one that they canned in the first place, which worked a lot better in the first. Anyway, no, but they that, spent, they spent nearly 45 million trying to make it work, and then they've decided they're going to spend another 25 million dollars over the next next amount of years to go back to the old system because the new one's not working. I think it was more. I think it was. A lot, I think it was more than I thought. It was about a hundred and something million because I think a couple of weeks ago we did this story, and it was they're spending more on the they're spending more on the computer system than they are on mental health or something. Yeah, yeah. it is with the um, the incidentals like each year. But initially, I think it was a forty five million dollar mm. change up, and but, it's a twenty five. Oh, I don't mind spending hundred million dollars on something as long as it works. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you don't spend another hundred million dollars backtracking. Mm, but apparently, like, apparently, from from memory, from reading this from this article, I don't want to get what you know bogged down in all this sort of stuff. But it was that the company because you think, okay, why why aren't they getting a refund here? You know, why aren't they you know take it back? It doesn't work. Why why are we still paying money out? But apparently, the company that made the system said, hey, listen, this system won't suit what you want to do. It won't do what you want to do. And and some boffin said, oh yes, it will. I'll make it. <laughs> Look at me go. <laughs> and the um, oh, they're idiots. Who gave them oh. the um Yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, go. Yeah, Will. I was gonna say the the software doesn't support um split shifts and overlapping shifts and um multiple shifts and things like that. It doesn't handle any of that. It's designed from a straight nine to five. That's it. Yeah. And that was it. Who gave number one, who gave this who were the people that built it? Who were the what's the name of the company? The outsource no, who they outsource it? Oh German company. Is it um not SAP, is it? I'm not oh, sure. I couldn't say off the top of my head. I know it's a German company, though. If it is, if it is SAP, they're a German company, you know, and I, I, it, it sounds like SAP because you know this is whoever gave them the scope. Number one should be shot and go right. We need it to do this, mm. and the Germans go away and do it, or Americans or whoever. And obviously, no one gave them the proper scope, so they've come back with a system that they thought would work, and obviously doesn't. Now, oh. the reason I think SAP is ten years ago. Remember I sent you those articles, Glenny? Yes, yes. Yes. Hello. And what it was, <laughs> was um, Queensland Health saw it implemented somewhere and uh, said, oh, that should work for uh, us. It looks uh, nice. Let's like, use it. The Germans said it won't work. Ten we don't years it. ago. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> now... Uh, we can't get you that one. We can't get Eric. Hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll text the him. The system that... I think he's gone. <laughs> no sound. Um, hang on, I'll just put reset if can again, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the... Yeah, so anyway, the, you know, the system's stuffed. But anyway, while Eric uh, come, Oh, I can hear something. Hello, Eric. Hello. Yep. Oh, he's back. He's back. There we go. Uh, yeah, well, you were, just want to finish off. You sent me those articles. Yes, that's where we got up to. And that's where we're going to leave it. Back in <laughs> uh, Yeah, it sounds, it sounds um, look, I'm not saying that the Germans did this, but you there? Hello? Yeah, yep. Hello? 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 Now he can't hear us. Hang on. I, I might even try ringing him back. Back in 2009, even as they Hello. implemented the system, at the point they identified it, there was 70 errors in the so in the software. Yeah, yeah. Before they implemented it. But I mean, like it, it's like it's just crazy. Like if if they say no, the software initially it won't do it. Then hello. What? Yes, hello. You're hello. back. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. I can. I can hear you. <laughs> good. Good. No camera, right. please. No, no, you haven't got, oh, hang on, sorry. I, I turned it off earlier. All right. So, did, All right. did you want, just want to end up on Oh, that? yeah, what I was saying, sorry. This is just, yeah, yeah, I'll finish this up. This is just, drag, this, this is dragging on. <laughs> um, um, there was a, 10 years ago when I was um, a CFO for a, an internet firm in, in Sydney, we were designing, we needed to design a, a um, you know, a multi-currency, multi-country multi, multi -country 
blah 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 system, you know, because yep. it was going to go in about three or four countries. And so we got uh, an ASP solution, which is the equivalent of a cloud solution now, but for you know sort of medium sized um, you know corporations. And uh, so they came in, and the solution they were using was a, a SAP SAP light, if you like, for small business. And so we said to them, okay, that's fine. They all told us, they all went through and said, oh, it'll do this, it'll do this, and all that. Okay, it looked all good. We, we trialed it in, you know, in the you know, office in the States, Hong Kong, uh, 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 where was the other one, Bermuda or some, some other place, and then Australia. And I um, said, so, okay, that all looks good. Mm. And I thought, right, right. now let's um, – and this is just before the GST is going to come in. So we said, look, we've got to uh, make sure that the GST is all, is all included in. So if I put in $1,100, it'll know that it's $100 of its GST, put it to the right account, like MYOB does, right? Yes. Pretty yep. simple. Yep. So said, okay, fine. They couldn't do it. I said, oh, no, you're going to have to do it manually. I said, hang on a minute. That's ridiculous. Hmm. So I said, what if I, I bought an asset and I needed to add it to the balance sheet, whether it be a car or a computer or whatever? I said, oh, you have to ring Germany and it's a 24-hour turnaround. They have to add the account for you. I said, righto then. Can't contact, con- contract's cancelled. See you later. <laughs> Do you believe that? Oh. I have to ring Germany. Mm. So I want to add an ad. I want to add an account. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. That's uh, even. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> sorry. Just ridiculous. So, so it wouldn't surprise me if it was SAP. No, probably not. Well, we, we were using SAP. This sounds like. Sorry. Job Sorry we're laughing, Eric, but if something's happened uh, to your audio, <laughs> it may just sound really slow. <laughs> but at the end of the day, the um, I think what Eric was saying was that, uh, yeah, he asked, for, he asked for stuff to be done. He said, how can I do this? I want to be able to add an asset to the balance sheet. And he said, well, the, the company said, we've got to call Germany. And uh, it's a 24-hour turnaround to get that whatever you want done. So he canned it. So good stuff, good stuff. All right, hang on, he's gone again. He might have to sit out on the balcony. <laughs> hang on, we'll, we'll hang him. We'll hang him up. They attack the Germans, they fight back. They do, they do. So what we might do <laughs> is we might just have another little quick break here, and we'll just see if we can um, maybe just start the whole Skype call again or something, and see how we go. All right, so we'll better save that file. Save. Um. Oh dear. All right. <laughs> so I'll I'll call you back too, Will. Okay. Okay. All right. He did pay the Eric sound a bit slow, didn't it? Hello? All right. Have we got Eric? Okay, how's that? Are we better? Yes, that's good. Cool. All right, so Eric must still be just resetting there. <laughs> Wait till he hears that back. That was funny. <laughs> oh yeah, he's offline. He must be. Um... You can't tell me that Skype doesn't, you know, try to do its best to handle bad connections. No, I did try. Give it that. <laughs> For once. Yeah, I'll give it that. All right, so push this. That's a leaking. Here. <laughs> One, two, three. All right. Who's over here? How are we for time? There we go. Uh, uh, Azra Consulting Services. Thanks for adding me. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. How are you? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Is this spam or what? 
thanks. How are you? See what they say back to me. This is on Skype. Someone's someone's Skype spamming me. I've only had that happen on a rare occasion, eh? It's not too bad. Not better than it used to be. <clears throat> I'm going to even just close that window. They're, they're not going to answer me back because they're <laughs> crap. Close that window. So wait for Eric to reboot. He must be rebooting. Do you want to talk about Harry Potter or are we going to talk about how to watch US TV for free? Or how about um, the world's worst Photoshop picture? Mm. Oh, here we Maybe the Warcraft is now free. Here we go. The Queen's Hacker's Revenge. Mm. I am good, thanks. How are you? <laughs> good. <laughs> Should I just, so I just ask if they got any new pictures of themselves just to get it over and done with. <laughs> yeah, just start now and be done with it. <laughs> Cut to the chase. Uh, good. Um, about Justin Bieber's latest um, purchase. Yeah, I know. A bit crazy. I've got a heap of stories tonight. Figures. <laughs> Yeah, it'll cost me nine ninety five. I just said, "Oh, good. How do you know me?" It's got to be. I doubt if there'd be a listener because they would have identified themselves. Well, how about we talk about the study about uh, how <coughs> Australians know nothing about internet porn? Don't we? No, and there's even a survey you can take to prove it. <clears throat> okay, we can we can run with that. Holy Mother of God! Hello, yes, we're back. Holy shit! I took I'm, I unplugged the Telstra dongle. Yeah, I'm just tethering tethering from my iPhone now. Oh, okay, well, let's see how that goes. All right. So, was the Telstra thing hot? Uh, let me feel it for you. <laughs> yeah, quite warm. Is your my dongle? dongle warm? My dongle is warm, Willem. It is warm. <laughs> But at least it's not soft. That's the thing with <laughs> when things get warm, they tend to expand. <laughs> That's not there's always no sh- true. There's no shrinkage. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Uh, well, we'll, we'll, just, we'll forget that one. We'll just put that one forget to bed. Forget it? Yeah, Pass. that one's in bed. Uh, so we might just do a quick little quick little two-minute little audible thing. There's no, there's no sound grabs, but we'll just mention it and... Um, Yes, no sound grab today. Sorry, sound grab got a book for me. Oh, hang on, wait. Well, what we might be Just able to w- do? No, it won't be. I can. I only I can hear it because I haven't got my mixer with me, obviously. So no, you if won't you hear give anything. Me a book, I'll give you a grab. No, I was going to say what we might do is maybe. If I don't just... want you to. I don't want you to give me a grab, Will. <laughs> 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 but what we might do, I've just had another thought, is yes. is if we just maybe do the show and then we'll do the an audible bit after the show. Could do that. And or, No, it only has to be really, really fast. Yeah, I'm, all right. I haven't looked. In all honesty, I haven't even looked at yeah, that's all right. the dingoes. That's cool. Um, which books, uh, whatever. I'm, I'm actually getting into the... Um, the uh, at the moment this week we've already spoken about this a few weeks ago. I'm getting into the um, the General Motors story, which is fascinating. Mm. fascinating. Uh, yeah, so I've got questions, but I don't want to ask them because I want to ask them when we're doing the doing the thing. But all right, so we'll just move on, and because what I will mm. do is if we do it at the end, then I can insert it between that this break. If you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, why don't you do a little um, <clears throat> audio grab now, saying? Uh, you know, something along, and you can just cut it in before we all crapped out earlier. You know, just say something like, on, and I'd like to thank our sponsor, Bang Bang Bang, and then say nothing else. Yep. And then we'll just talk stories, and then you can gra- get that audio grab and put it just before I hung up. So you want me to How's do it that? now? Well, it's up to you. You can do it later, you can do it now, but that's probably how you'd want to do it. Oh, okay, radio. Yeah, I, yeah, okay, so we'll say... um. Yeah, no, I'll mix it. I'll do it later. I'll mix it all in. We'll do yeah. it. We'll do it. Mix it all in. All right. Yeah, we'll, all do right. All we'll do it. We'll do it. Okay. So we're going to come back and just we'll, what do we say? Half an hour. Yeah. So we we'll just we we'll just do some. We won't get trying to get bogged down in uh, 
in NBN stuff. And medical stories. That's right. Isn't that a joke, just quietly, though? It's a joke. Oh, man. joke. But I like my doctors. And yeah. they, make, they make me good money. But I tell you what. That's 6000 bucks. Jeez. Well, mm, I, I think an incentive is just to, to maybe to get more business would be incentive enough. To provide an extra service would be incentive enough. But 6000 Yeah. They'd be happy with a thousand, probably. That's so, right. Like six. Anyway, let's 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 move on. <laughs> let's move on. Oh, look, I did have a story that I could have put in with. You know, look, I'll, I'll just do this, just a quick story just for the lounge. But uh, internet is becoming a daily habit for more than half of us. Seven. Then this just goes so opposite to what this doctor story is all about, right? Seven out of ten households connecting to the internet. More than half of them going online daily. So this is how much the internet is, is, is penetrating the, the system. Four out of five children aged between five and 14 using the internet. Nearly six million households, 72% of homes had internet access in 0809. That's already three years old. Up from just one million in 1998. Um, yeah. Yeah, 2009, nine out of 10 businesses were connected. Nine out of 10. Wow. Okay. Is a doctor a business? Oh, yeah, yes, course. I think so. Yeah, so nine out of ten business connected. Uh, more than <coughs> nine in ten Australians who had the internet at home used it weekly. So pretty internet savvy people here. We, we yeah, I agree. Where's my Look, that whole That whole statistic by the government might be just a furphy as an excuse to throw money. Throw money why? out. They're useless. But why? Because they're already on. The, I don't know. Because they're trying to win their favour. Mm. Possibly. Maybe they want to pass some some um, questionable laws that's going to affect the medicos in the future. So this is their way of a little, a little side bribe. Mm. But anyway, uh, what I'm going to do actually next week also, Lounge, is I'm going to try and put my show notes up before the show. So any links and stuff, if you want, you can just flick over and, and link straight to the article so you can see what I'm banging on about. How would you just like that? Sounds good? Good. Oh, you're, you're spoiling them. Do your own research. <laughs> oh, I know. All right, let's let's get going while Eric's maintaining his goodness. <laughs> okay. It's only warm. <clears throat> All right, and and we're back. Eric's replaced his dongle, <laughs> and uh, he's he's now he's now he's now tethered. So good work, tethered yeah. to the iPhone. Show us your tether. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, Will. So you've got a couple of stories there. A couple of interesting ones you're just rabbiting th- through as we had a break. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll start with one that is quite hard to believe, but apparently Australians know next to nothing about internet porn. Mm. Um, well, I do find it hard to believe. Hey? I do find it hard to believe. Your street alone would be distinction <laughs> students. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to a um, University of Western Sydney postgrad. Postgraduate student Emma Pin undertaking a study of internet pornography to fill an academic research void. Oh Not yeah, good one. That academic research is, but her study will aim to identify links between adult fantasy tendencies and the use of pornography, as well as the impact technology has on viewing habits. Um, anyway, carries on to say, you know, while we know a few things about internet pornography, we do not know a lot. Blah 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 blah. The best part about it is you can go to surveymonkey.com slash online research or online porn research um, and it brings you to a survey so you too can be part of this whole, you know. Hmm. Any pictures? (laughs) And um, We're not not doing it. (laughs) (laughs) There's a whole thing at the start of it. It's a whole, basically it's a waiver. You're invited to participate in a study about internet pornography by completing an anonymous survey, blah, 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 blah. You know, who's carrying out the survey, what's the study about, how much time will it take. You know, they've said 15 minutes, but I reckon that's way too long. Mm. Um, you know, what the study involves. It takes you a couple of minutes, does it, Will? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, In and out, that's, that's what you want. As you down, that's right. The last sort of statement is, will the survey harm me? And it says, there's no obvious risks for participants. However, if you're upset after participating, oh, you're encouraged God. to contact Lifeline. <laughs> oh. oh, come on! Oh, that's wrong. Right. One, one other: do, 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 you, do you have to bring your own? Uh, do you have to bring your own um, container? No. Oh. <laughs> what happens if you make a mistake? Can you use a rubber? Or, or, or <laughs> <related to Australia. laughs> alternatively, psychological care is available from www.makingchanges.com.au or contact the Australian Psychological Society. Oh, <laughs> oh look. 
I suppose they have to do that. They've got to cover their asses. They've got to do that. But it is ridiculous. Yeah, just make sure you've got lead in your pencil and you're ready to go. That's right. Make sure you've got your, your sharpener out. <laughs> oh, look out. <laughs> oh, hello. That was, that was pretty quick off the mark there, Will. That was a good fa- effect. That's what I, I've got to get one in my iPad. I'm going to do that. All right. Uh, uh, Google has opened up a new as a, a Facebook lookalike thing, whatever you call I it. I want this. Google Plus. Why can't you get it? You sign up. I've signed up. No, oh, yeah, you got it's got invite only at the moment. No, I signed up. Yeah, right. How did you sign up? Well, up I just went. It. I went to Google Plus and went sign up. Yes, okay, thank you. Well, send me an invite. Well, I didn't see that you could. I didn't know it was invite only. Yeah, I, you can. You've got fifteen invites you can send out. Look, I, I read that it was invite, and then I went. I logged out of Google and then went back to the page, and it still would let me sign up. So, I don't know, maybe they... But no, everyone gets 15 invites. Well, I'll send you one. I signed up to it earlier, but I couldn't actually use the service. I could view it, but I couldn't do anything with it because I wasn't invited. I could sign up to it and look at it. That's about it. Right. And well, we'll... I got to that page where it says, sorry, we're not sending, you know, blah, 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 invitations yeah. anymore. The, because they've got a massive influx in, in a very short period of time, I think. Yes, but whoever um, got in... Got everyone, they get 15 invites. Right. Well, I'm just going to have, I'm just trying to have a look now. And uh, look, as, as, as an incentive, if I do have invites, well, I'll, I'll talk about it after the show tonight, after the live show. And if I do have invites, anyone that wants one, because you listen live, I'll give you one if you want one. But I've got to see. We'll talk about it after the show. But anyway, anyway, so Google's opened up Google Plus. Um, the new service, a top priority for new Google chief Larry Page, is aimed at exploiting uh, what had been considered a weakness of Facebook. And that weakness was by default people using Facebook share all their information with a big group of friends, whereas this is the other way around. And after a quick bit of a – well, I haven't used it extensively, obviously. I only just joined this afternoon. But just by – I did one little uh, message or whatever you call it, one little – not a, it was not a tweet, but one little whatever it is, and uh, yeah, it said what, what do you want to who do you want to share it with, and it had uh, groups like friends, uh, family, blah blah blah, and I'm guessing you can make up your own groups. They're actually called circles, so you got your, yeah. your different circles of friends or your circle of business. The one thing I don't mention in any of the marketing for this is that somebody's twelve year old daughter designed the names for it. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, what like circle and that sparks, hangouts, huddle. Yeah. That's mobile. But I think that's good. Don't you? Do you think that they're a bit babyish then? No, I just think it's it's good that they've had mm. a complete rethink on something for once. They've actually gone, you know, and if you've noticed their homepage is actually like cool now. <laughs> yeah. Do you mean like the Google homepage? Yeah. Well, I know they've changed the color of the band across the top. Did you get that? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a black it's band. All, um, and you can even do voice search directly on from the homepage now. You can do what, sorry? You can do voice search directly from the homepage. Nice, nice. You can click the mic and say something. Oh, double nice. Yeah, so anyway, Google Plus lets users do video chats, which I'm keen to have a look at, much like features of its Gmail, e- Gmail email service, but with a big upgrade. Users can talk to and see many friends at once. Definitely keen on looking at that. Uh, no, I saw Leo this morning trialling this on, um, on This Week in mm-hmm. Google. Yeah. And um, I think each circle is allowed to have 10. Nice. So, and they all had, it was 10 videos at once. And what happened was they all, they had nine videos on the bottom. Yep. Nine little screens, very clear. And then the one that you were talking to directly was at the front. And you could switch between them, just going, okay, who's talking now? I'll put them on the main screen, you know what I mean? But then mm. the one that was talking just gets minimized down to the bottom. I'll tell you what, Skype, you'd be better be worried. I'm telling mm. you now because as soon as this comes out, we're ditching Skype. Oh, if anything, any- oh, actually does that too. You put it in dynamic mode, and it'll do that. Yeah, if it's yeah, anything it's not, better, no, that's not the issue. It's the dropouts and the crap mm. and the software oh. bullshit. Yeah, that's right. So Google, yeah, so uh, Google this thing called, as Will said, Sparks uh, suggests articles to read and videos to watch based on what the service knows about users' interests. Its Huddle feature lets users send text messages to several different people at once. A process known as group texting. Jeez, that's... You know, we won't get that. That's like Twitter. We haven't even got Google Talk yet. No. But there's no... There's, yeah, who knows? 
Who knows? Uh, yeah, so that sounds all right. So stick around after the show, though, you little livers. And uh, if I've got these invites, as everyone tells me I have, I'll um, hand them out. Uh, all right. What else you got there, Will? You're telling me Justin Bieber or yep. Bimble, Bimble Bob just, or something? Uh, no, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> That's him? The other Justin. Um, <laughs> One of them. Normally he doesn't, you know, there's not a lot of difference. They seem, they're pretty similar, really. Same amount of talent. Um, <laughs> normally they, when I see a name like, name like that in the headline, it sort of doesn't worry me because. Has been shot, the, uh, dead. Stone Justin dead. Like, okay. <laughs> So and when you see names in the headlines like that, it's like Justin Timberlake shot stone dead, smashed with an egg. Yeah, well, that was the other one. Or you know, but this one says Justin Timberlake among the buyers. So I say, oh, cool, he's been locked up for, you know, buying cocaine or something. But no, not that lucky. However, <clears throat> News Corp has sold my space, my space, for thirty-five million dollars to a consortium of people, including Justin Timberlake. Yeah, yeah. Um, Apparently, an advertising well, he's got plenty of money. Well, he, he would have, wouldn't yeah. he? An he's advertising got, he, company called Specific Media. That's it. Um, they'll team up with the Simba to acquire My, MySpace in a deal that caps a tumultuous period under Rupert Murdoch News Corp, which swooped into buy MySpace in two thousand and five for five hundred and eighty million. What a sold wanker! It for <laughs> It just goes to show you, and it even goes through and says this in the article, that basically look what happens when you give a successful, a successful you know, yeah, product. business mm. to somebody like a media mogul like you know, Murdoch, yeah. and look yeah. what he does to it. Yeah. Oh, the, he, he, where's Tim? Get Tim or Tom. Who's Get, Tim? Tom, isn't it? Tom, sorry. Was it Who's Tom? Tom? Oh, <laughs> Tom? Everybody's friend. <laughs> Tom was everybody's friend. Oh, Tom. Yeah. Oh, Tom. He must have been yeah, like okay. the creator of MySpace um, yeah. or something. Uh, for the quarter end of, two thousand, of March 2011, News Corp reported a segment operating loss of $165 million, mainly yeah. due to declines at MySpace. <laughs> How can my, a, a little web portal thing cost you $165 million? Because they're idiots. Because the overstaffed, mate. They, they loaded it up. Yeah, right. Yep. Well... The U.S. visitors the- fell from, um, or fell, 150 million people in a month. Hmm. Well, yeah, I, I don't go. I don't go to MySpace anymore. No one does. It's rubbish. Now, <laughs> sorry, I didn't I mean, go I, to it then because bands like um, the Wonderland Project, like. In, independent bands like that, you know, even though they may be, you know, my, my nephew might be the lead singer, but bands like the Wonderland Project host all their files and every and their stuff on MySpace because it's it's an easy way for them to do that. So, I mean, there still is a, a use for it, but mm. it certainly could be a lot better. Oh, and apparently the Frosty in the lounge is telling you can't delete Tom. I didn't know that. You can't delete Tom. No. Oh. Oh, you wouldn't know. All right. <laughs> AFP readies, readies its list for ISPs to block in case mm. they have child pornography. The Australian Federal Police has started preparing its first ISP censorship notices under a voluntary internet filtering scheme targeting online child abuse material. Yesterday, Telstra confirmed it would commit to a scheme, which was looked, it was a sort of yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. But yesterday confirmed uh, commit to commit to a scheme to block a narrowly focused list of material maintained by Interpol and vetted mm. by the AFP. Optus yep. also confirmed that they would comply with the scheme based on Interpol list, but that it would not start blocking sites until late July. Funnily enough, the original list was supposed to be compiled by the AFP, but all the all the ISP said, no, you've got nothing to do with it. There's going to be a vetted list and it's going to be the Interpol list that the rest of the world uses. Um, so, yeah, so it goes through that. The only contentious part of it is to make it sort of more generic for around the world, um, they have an age of 13 rather than 18, um, but that's to do with the different laws in different countries. What, what do you mean? Uh, an, an age, what, if you're under, what, 13 as a child and then in some countries 18 as a child? Is that what you mean? Um, Australian law holds children <coughs> under 18 rather than 13, but the, I, the um, Interpol proposed program filters domains where children under or perceived to be under the age of 13 were visualized instead of the under age of 18 
Right. Um, that's I'm sure they'll sort that out, but that's just because some countries, you know, allow you know th- once you hit thirteen, you're an adult. So thirteen, yeah, you're an adult. Some of the yeah, right. Yeah, yeah right. the airlines think you are. <laughs> yeah, well, why? <laughs> yes. Movie tickets. Yeah, show movie tic- tickets, airlines. But then isn't it funny that when you go to, say, uh, Centrelink and all this sort of stuff, when you're a young fella, like 18 years old or something, you're still, I think it's something weird that you can't, you're not classified as an independent until... Still, because you're at home, 25. Yeah, until you're 25. That's right. Mm. Yeah. Unless you've got, good, you know, unless you are actually independent. That's right. But you're yeah, still- unless you are, that's right. If you're living at home, you're not classified independent up to the age of 25. Yeah. Mm. But you're still an adult. Yeah. Oh, yeah, shit, yeah. yeah. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's yet to be seen. <laughs> old, old enough to read, all that sort of stuff. Um, old enough to read, old enough to go on the dial. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, inside, I, sorry, I, you finished with that one, Will, or you keep going? Yeah. Oh, you finished? Okay. Okay, um, remember last week and the week before, we were talking about how my domains, I couldn't access them because of there's, the, the domain registrar was hacked and attacked and smashed. Well, apparently, there was a 30-minute hacking episode and it led to the downfall. So I'm guessing the downfall, meaning that they were bought out. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, downfall of Victorian-based distribute, distribute.it and has been referred to the Australian Federal Police for investigation. The attack sought to destroy both live and backup data. It's a very naughty attack, very nasty. Some sort of vengeance going on, you would, would, one would assume. Mm. Um, rendering recovery virtually impossible. I hope my little domain's safe. In about 30 minutes, <laughs> hackers wiped... <Not> anyway. <laughs> you what? Sorry? The sick tab had nothing on it anyway. It had a redirect to a shop that didn't exist. So? Still got something there. I hope it's still safe. <laughs> I don't want any of my little babies falling into the wrong hands. In about 30 minutes, hackers wiped four of eight servers, destroying 4,800 accounts and taking down websites, representing about half the customer base. Wow. The devastation extended to reseller network, uh, people and organisations that resold domains, um, blah, blah, blah. Now, Net Registry Group Chief Exec- Executive Larry Block who was in charge of the data recovery effort, said the attack had sought to destroy the company's data rather than steal it. And it included data from independent backup system. So they've, they've really gone to town on this place. The hackers wiped... Oh, that's all right then. They didn't want to steal it. They just wanted to ruin it. Oh, that's okay then. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Go over your lives. Yeah, uh, no worries. Oh, you didn't want to steal it. Oh, we'll back off. Yeah, so they, they've wiped the hard drive address blocks, uh, rendering unreadable disk storage content containing web hosting files. Uh, blocks said Distributed IT had a fairly sophisticated snapshot backup regime which he believed was accessed independently off the main system. Mr. Blocks at Net Registry had partly, partly recovered distributed IT's data from a three-week-old backup that was not destroyed. So that's, like, so that's heavy stuff, eh? Heavy stuff going on down there. So someone's going to be in a whole lot of trouble when they find out who it was. Mm. And, that's uh, a way to look, though. Start off taking out the backup servers because they're not monitored for attacks and stuff like that generally. And then once you've cleared out the backup servers, go for the main ones. Yeah, so they're calling it an inside job. So whether or not that's how it's going to pan out, just to wait and see, I guess. But, uh, yeah, certainly no good because I, I still – I have to have a look. I'll look again tonight after the show, but I haven't been able to access those domains because as, as people – I think it was Disgruntled Tech pointing out to me uh, week in, week out that, that the AussieTechEds.com domain just points to nowhere. And I've been trying to change it, but I can't because um, I was with these guys who, were, who got smashed. All right. Um, Speaking of um, yes. hackers and the like, now this just goes to show you how much of a clue the media has. Uh, if you read the headlines that says, Queensland hacker has his red rooster revenge, he tempts revenge by chicken. Okay. Now, if you actually read the story, it says a 23-year-old former fast food worker at the Red Rooster has escaped conviction after apparent revenge attack where he remotely access the work computer in order to, in order to order $67,000 worth of chicken. Oh, now, that's foul. That was flagged by the supplier. That's and, foul. You know, well done. <laughs> it was foul. Oh, dear. Um, but the thing is that they make it sound like it was, you know, a vengeance attack. Like, you know, he, he went out of his way to hack into this... It had nothing to do with that. 
if you actually read the story, he was um, uh, <clears throat> actually more than just a worker. He was actually management who used to have remote access to the system so that he could do stock takes and do remote ordering and everything from home. Mm. So all he did was he just did his usual chicken. thing where he does, logged into the system remotely and um, ordered $67,000 worth of chicken. Oh, imagine <laughs> that coming to your house. Were they the um, <laughs> spicy wings? <laughs> does, does, that, does it say if they actually arrived? No, no. As soon as that large order went to the supplier, suppliers rang the, the store and went, hang on a minute, did you just order that? <laughs> and... Um, Certainly did. <laughs> and Do you like, reckon we no. should check this and one? So of course, once they went through the logs and saw that somebody had, they put two and two together, looked at the remote access logs and went, hey, it was you. So it's not like it was a, a hacker attack, you know. Mm. Yeah. Like two plus two. Yeah, 65,000, that's, that's massive. That's massive. How much would that have cost? Yeah. Well, even a 60, bucks 65,000. You know? <laughs> 30-odd thousand chooks. Yeah, that's a lot. A lot of little chicky little chickens. Uh, Microsoft. Stop, stop, stop feeding the chooks, is what I say. Well, that's right. <laughs> oh, look, the, the quality of the conversation just gets better and better. Uh, Microsoft <laughs> releases first service pack for Office 2010. The service pack is available through a number of channels. Obviously, the download center, automatic, Office automatic update, blah, blah, blah. Um, Microsoft initially, but after 90 days, an automatic update will be available. Microsoft has launched Service Pack 1 for Office and SharePoint 2010. So there you go. If you got one of those, you want to update it, go get it. Yeah. Um, speaking of Microsoft doing things, um, <laughs> I don't know. They have basically released their Office 365 package, which is pretty much online Office for all <laughs> intensive purposes. Yeah, um, I had the beta. They don't want me to pay for it. Bloody, exp no way. Yeah, exactly. And just, you know, just in case we're not being ripped off enough by have to paying for an online service that Google lets you do for free. Um, Telstra has become the exclusive Australian host um, of Office 365. So, the Telstra T-Suite... Yeah, but you can bypass them and buy it direct. You can buy it direct from the state. Well, yeah, but not, you know... Not the way this story is. Isn't there an happens. issue? Is it? Is this the issue where the servers are actually are still in Singapore anyway? Is yeah. it? Yeah, and and basically what Telstra is doing is they're buying it from Singapore, as it says in here. But the thing is, to give you an example, if you buy it directly from the US for a twenty-five employee license, it's eight dollars per user per month. Um, sorry, Australian. Yeah, eight dollars per user per month. If you buy it direct, it's six dollars from US. Um, if you go up a plan for over 25 employees, it's $15 per user per month here. It's $10 in the US. If you go up to a plan that enables you to share and edit, um, it sells for 25 here or 16 US. And the best one is the enterprise customers that want the whole thing, basically. It's equivalent to Office Professional. Um, in the US, it's $24 per person per month. It's $40 here for that, per yeah. person. Yeah, per it's ridiculous. Mm. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Oh, I'd be using it. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. Well, I've got no need, I think. Unless you're, doing, unless you're doing real complex spreadsheets. Look, I do think, obviously, the Microsoft products are better than what Google offers. Like, I, I, I can see that. Uh, mm. So unless you're, unless you're actually doing, you know, pivot tables and, you know, all the, all the good stuff... Uh, you're probably not going to really need it, but but I don't know. You, like, you know, if you're big on yeah, if you're big on collaboration and you've got lots of people working on projects that are spread out all over the place, yeah, fine. But you know, I don't need it. No, well, look, there's a plugin from Google which I've which I use. Uh, no one, I don't really. Well, I've got it. I installed. It, I don't really use it because I've got no point, no use for it. But there's a, it's a good Microsoft Office plugin, so it plugs into your Excel or Office uh, to, to sync with Google Docs. So, That's perfect. Yeah, so Google mm. Cloud Connect is a Microsoft Office plugin released by Google. It's been available for testers, blah, 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 but it's now blah, blah, blah. It syncs a user's – I just looked it up. I'm just reading this off the net now. It syncs a user's office – It's this is hard to say. It syncs a user's office docs with their Google docs and adds a toolbar for sharing documents right into your office. They've, we've been asking for offline access for Google docs for years, and this is a step towards that. So like, if you needed an Excel document to sync – up to Google and back again, well, this will be it. 
and that's for free. I mean, right. to be honest, the only real thing I used um, Office for that I that I can't do in Google is Publisher. Mm. Oh, look, I use Office. I've got Office, and I I use it. I prefer oh, look, to use it. It's very good. I, it's quite good. Hmm. I don't even. I actually uninstalled Publisher. I couldn't be bothered. Oh, no, I just keep it well, there. Who cares? I mean, I, it's not even me so much to use it, Sonia, but that's the only reason we have it. We use Google Docs for everything else except Publisher, and there are a couple of alternatives to Publisher, hmm. but they're not as compatible, and you have issues and blah. So it's just. As I said, that's the only thing I use it for. Yeah. Look, I think... The rest of Office isn't even installed. The big thing for me is when you... when you, uh, I use Excel quite a bit. And when you're mucking around with data and you, you want a local copy of something, you, it's too slow on yeah. the cloud. Like you yeah. do, you want to be cut and paste, cut and paste, you know, flick and flop and all this. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Do it on the cloud's too slow. So you need... Even if you use yeah. Open Office, but I found that the Microsoft Office is... Yeah, look... I grew up on it, was brought up on it. I just know it, that's so it. that's why I like it. I mean, there's one way, another way to get around the, the localized shoring thing of Office, and that's to, because Dropbox maps as a local drive, so you can actually save your files directly to Dropbox. Mm. And you can access it from anywhere. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. You can save it in, and you can, make it, you can make as many directories as you like and have as many shares in it, like, like I did with Glenn during the week. For yeah. example, on Dropbox. That's right. And I think only it, he can. He, only he and I can look in that folder. Yes. Yeah. That's right. I, I think Perfect. it's. I'm not sure how Dropbox. Oh, well, they do have a subscription model, I suppose, and that probably makes them the money. But it probably it's like Microsoft. Their their business model is probably aging. It's it's not as it's not keeping up with the time, so to speak. Or you know, the 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 usefulness is what that they do is not really. Um, coming, you know, not really uh, cutting it at this time. Like you've got Google offering all these free products, uh, and their main business is advertising. So how can mm. a spreadsheet mob, you know, compete against a free thing? And when their business is not even in spreadsheeting, if you know what I mean? Yeah. Look, I think that Microsoft they'll they'll this will be they'll fine tune this, and they will be. I think eventually they'll compete very well. <laughs> I think what they got to do. I think what they got to do is, is start looking at at Jobsy. And go, okay, this guy's offering what the, this cloud service, cloud me mm. or cloud me off or something, for 25 bucks a year. Like, yeah, um, me off. Now that's <laughs> <laughs> whatever it's called, but that's, um, <laughs> that's, that's reasonable. You'd pay that. Well, I would probably do yeah. that for Office, you know? I probably would do that. Oh, but his is only storage too. It's not, it's not documents, whereas Office is offering you the whole suite for a particular price. Jobs oh, okay. is only offering you. So um, you're renting the software. That is, yeah, it's renting the software. Jobs is only offering you storage. Oh, okay, right. Nothing else. No, there's no programs or applications involved in that. Right. Well, I, I think even if they can get the price down to, you know, something. Yeah, it's going to come down to pricing, I think, and mm. and not only just that. It's coming down to pricing and stop the Australian resellers screwing you on the pricing. They've got to put it. They've got to put a stop to that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right, Will, any more stories? Yeah, while we're speaking about Microsoft, um, just a quick one. An eBay seller has been fined $90,000. Um, a man accused of selling more than 100 copies of counterfeit Office or Microsoft software on eBay has been fined $90,000 in a federal court. 27-year-old Howard... Cunningham. Bang. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and Richie. Both criminal and civil lawsuits filed by Queensland Police and Brisbane... Uh, and Microsoft in Sydney after a police raid on his home on 9th of February. He's accused of operating at least 38 different eBay aliases to sell counterfeit copies of Windows 7, Windows Server 2008, and Windows Office 2010. Um, well, is boy. it really worth the effort? He, I mean, he had up to 38 aliases, and they only accused him of selling 35 copies. Um, <laughs> that's one per alias. It's not worth now, it. Now, shipping is sold them for half the price, so he's probably sold them for fifty bucks each. Yeah. You know. it's, it's, look, he would have had a better he would have had a better time down at the flea market or the, the garage boot <laughs> sale or whatever it was called. Car boot sale. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know. But, so yeah, like, but, but if you're gonna I mean, go start doing that stuff, well, there goes his house. I mean pirating's you know, this is this is the true definition of pirating. It's it's taking something for free that somebody else has done. And making money on it now—that's pirates gone back, you know, 
hundreds and hundreds of years sailing the open seas. That's what a pirate did. Mm. They took something that somebody's worked hard on, claimed it as their own, and then unsold it for profit. Mm. You know, so that's the true definition of a pirate. Somebody who downs, who burns a Windows CD, turns it to an ISO and throws it on a torrent isn't a pirate. They might be a copyright infringer, but they're not a pirate. And no, it, that's know, right. And so the, the vac- it's actually <clears throat> the definition right in this article. Mm. Yeah, but Microsoft are pretty heavy on it all. And look, I think that, that possibly 90000 is probably uh, probably a good deal for him. You know, I think he probably could have got fined a bit more than that. I think, um, yeah, ninety thousand. But then, how much did he make? You know, is it that out of? So, you know, you know, on thirty-eight but, accounts, just they got it. thirty-five infringements. So that's one account. It's not even worth the time and hassle setting up one account if that's all he actually sold. <laughs> no, no, that's right. No, no, that's right. Well, he probably would have sold more, but who knows? Who knows? But ninety grand. Yep, yeah, that's the way the the cookie crumbles. All right. Any more? Because I think we're just about there. Yeah, I have quite a few more, but um, I think show I'm notes. Running out of time. All right. Any important ones? Any interesting ones that you can't that can't wait? Um, just quickly, World of Warcraft is now free to go to a level twenty or whatever it is. I've never actually played World of Warcraft, so now that it's free, I've downloaded it and I'll have a go of it tomorrow and see what the big deal's about. No, no, uh, it's free. I'm still not going to touch it. No. <laughs> 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 I look at it and go, oh, that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. So, like, world world of forehead it. slap. Do you, <laughs> do, you, um, do, you, do you still get? Do you still play games with joysticks these days or are they all, are they all gone? Joysticks and dongles, mate. <laughs> and, <as a> jo- <laughs> and feeding chooks. <laughs> that's right. Oh, it's, all, it's all going on. But, but yeah, do you, do you use uh, the gamers, do they use joysticks? Is that what goes on these days or is it keyboard? or Surfaces, which are like. Com- dis- the discombobulated mice joystick keyboard thingies. <laughs> mm. Yeah, like I don't know. Game gaming pads, whatever they call them. They're, they're, br- they're like they're, they're pretty cool to look at. Actually, they're like this mound of things, mm. and everything does something. And people who are really good on it make everything do something at the right time. It's brilliant to watch. <laughs> These are the people that need to get back to work. Yeah, that's right. There's nothing wrong with a good, good left thrust on your joystick. I reckon. That's right. Thrust away, my friend. <laughs> that's right. All right. Well, on that freebie note, I think it's, it's time to end this episode 245. So I, I hear that, Eric, you won't be with us next week unless you call in from on look, your I phone. Could, look, I'm going to test. I want to check out the, the internet connection in, in, in Noosa Dua. Yeah. And if it's, if it's any good, I'll, I'll see if I can I come in quickly. They're two hours behind us. Right. So right now it'll be 7 o'clock there. All right. And... Uh, so if we start at 7.30, it'll be 5.30 there. I'll have pina colada in hand. Good stuff. And Skype away. Sounds so we'll, uh, we'll see what the internet connection's like first. Yes. Yep. All right. We shall. All right. Well, until next week, have a good one, guys. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the lounge. And thanks to the podcast listeners. So we'll see you for next week for the next episode. See you, Will. See you, Eric. Bye-bye. Oh, see ya. See ya. Bye. All right. Stop. All right. Ready. Fire. Pop that, goes the weasel. I think your phone went better than the dongle. The dong? I know. I think you know what it was. I think Will was right. It was it, or you, someone said it might is it hot? I think once it gets hot, it screws up. Why would it get any hotter when than the when it, oh, gets it does. Hot. I don't know why. It's really hot. Yeah, when it gets hot, it slows down a bit. And if you've got low signal, um, that's really noticeable. No, the, if you've signal, got good no, the signal, signal was really down. high. It was really good. I was getting four, four megabits down and one and a half up yeah, before we started this. Before we started the um, the the stream, and as soon as it started heating up, it dropped down to two megabits down and 0.5 up. It just dropped, mm. and the signal was still showing me five bars though. Did you have it's it plugged start. directly into the laptop, or did you have it through a cable? Uh, in directly into the laptop and through a cable, and either one was showing me the same symptoms. I was going to say because normally if you put a you know a couple of foot extension cable on and they don't get as hot because it look they actually yeah it's away from the computer that's right yeah they're actually designed.